did winning ugly bring a smile to your face again? What are you, what are you trying to say? I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying it's been a, I'm just saying I, I, I don't enjoy the beauty of no, our you, great game. I think you find the beauty in winning <laughs> ugly, I think. I just like to win. So we, we're at a point where we need to, we need to make a serious run here. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it takes to win. Win is a win is a win. That's right. But these second games sometimes are the product of the scouting and the knowledge of the team that you guys have. I mean, you see that. It comes out a little bit in these games, I think. I mean, Oklahoma State changed, but they changed five games before they got to us. So I don't think it was a product of that. Brad worked for me, so I knew what was coming the first time. Just played them in the NCAA tournament, so I don't know. I, maybe, maybe some alignments and that kind of thing, but we still got to make shots. But you made a lot of adjustments um, from game one to game two against Oklahoma, the way, you, the way you defended Woodard, the way you did some different things. You just kept them in front of us, but, but you know, when you, when you look at the Kansas State game, we lost there, we didn't guard. Oklahoma State game here, we were horrible. The Oklahoma game here, we were worse than we were at Oklahoma State game, if that's possible. We just didn't keep anybody in front of us. And when you're consistently turning people loose at the rim, they're going to score. They're going to score, you're going to get foul trouble, there's nothing good happens. So I think it was, I don't know if it was, it wasn't just for the Oklahoma game, it was something that was long to do. Is that a, just a attention to detail on your guys' part? Because it can go. I wish I knew. I mean, I keep asking them, and they don't you really give me an answer. But when Javon Carter just turns people as consistently because he has been as good a long ball defender as I've been. And he was turning people. It was just like this. It was a... Effort thing, I, you know, the majority of it happened here. I, I, sometimes you wonder, are they? Do they think we're just going to win because we're at home? Or, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, and I can't get them to give me an answer. Harder to play a team the second time after you beat them, or after, or after they lost. Well, or more after. <clears throat> You know, in Cincinnati for all those years when we played everybody twice, I always wanted to play away first. The good team is away first. And because if you, seemingly if you played them at home and beat them pretty good, it was it was really, really difficult to win the second game. You know, it was kind of that way when we played like a Memphis or a little the other really good teams. So I always wanted to play on the road first. And this year they're going to get Memphis and Baylor, both uh, haven't played at home. Yeah. yeah, I think it's harder. You, you look at the teams in basketball right now, other than your back, everybody's got losses. And, and some of them in the top 10 got multiple losses. Has it become a matter of trying to figure out how to string together uh, good games in a row? Because basically it's going to come down to winning six in a row and getting hot. And is, is that how you look at it? I think there's a lot of factors. We haven't had an undefeated team go all the way through since Indiana and there was no shot clock. Shot clock makes a huge difference. I mean, people who don't think the shot clock makes, has made a huge difference don't know what they're talking about. You can't, you can't run as well. You can't run uh, like Coach Knight's motion offense with clock. Really, at the end of his career, he had to get away from, to a large degree, running that exclusively because of the blockers and movers that, that Tony run so well at, at Virginia. If they had a clock, if, if, there, sorry, if there wasn't a clock, it'd be almost impossible to guard. That's, that's that, that whole game's it's changed the whole game. Talent disparity. I mean, if you look, it's. It's not as wide as it once was. Um, the knowledge, the, the, the coaches, what, what what you have at your disposal. You know, there's, it's, now, what's, what, what's, what do you mean by talent disparity? Because some guy who still has uh, you know sneakers that, that you know you, that you 
got the thing that you put over instead of ties, uh, rates a guy at a top 100, we're supposed to believe him. Well, I mean, sometimes you can see with your own eyes though, who's good and who's well, not. Well, Jason Maxfield wasn't a top 250 player, for instance, according to them. Okay. Until we signed him. And then all of a sudden they started watching and they say, damn, this guy's good. But I don't I don't put a lot of stock in all that stuff. I mean, and they copy off each other. It's a way they did. The, the good thing about it is, is President Trump now doesn't have to worry about those guys finding a job. You know, they, have, they found their niche. <laughs> Even yeah, you went totally good. a different direction. I didn't think you were going to go there. <laughs> no, yeah. it's a job saver. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Take a look at those guys sometime. Those are the most unathletic looking dudes you've ever seen in your life. And we're relying on them for who's a top 100 player. But the good teams this year have losses. Um, and, a, and a lot of losses. Um, you could be you could characterize your team in that in that regard too. You got five losses. I mean well, that's. But, but John, think think of what's happened. One and done. That didn't happen before. So what if Cal had kept all those guys for four years? I can tell you didn't have a heck of a chance of going undefeated. He almost did it when they were freshmen. What if you had all those guys back as sophomores, and juniors, and seniors? That's a difference. The difference is that the really good players don't stay. So you're, you're, those guys are constantly playing with younger guys. And when, when they struggle, what do they struggle with? They struggle with, with veteran teams. When we beat them, I think, still think this is his best team. When we beat them with John Wall and those guys, we had a veteran team. We had a whole bunch of older guys playing a bunch of freshmen. You have some older guys interspersed with a few freshmen. Um, I mean, four freshmen at one time on the floor against so. Yeah, by and large, though, you do have a yeah, lot of older guys. guys. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard. I mean, it's hard to, it, it, it's, with everything that happens in today's game, it's hard to, you know, ideally you want, you want to keep your classes, you know, not the same. That's, that becomes very difficult. It's happened with this freshman, with this freshman class, because Beetle got hurt. You got two great contributions from freshmen offensively, Beetle in the first half and Sags in the second half. How can you continue to, to move them along and get them where you feel comfortable in those other areas where you're concerned about them still? To be able to do those good things that they do do. Sags is, Sags is tough because it's, it's, it's still a, uh, a challenge with the language to make sure that he understands. And he's such a good kid, he acts like he understands when, whether he does or he doesn't, so you don't know whether he, he does or he doesn't. You know, Beetle went through, I think, what a lot of guys go through. You know, he, he, he was hurt, so that was a rough year for him, and he comes back and he's excited. and. Score an open gym, and you know you're playing, and you're like, man, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get some run here because you know I'm playing really well against these dudes, and then all of a sudden it comes down for playing time, and they really start playing, and then all of a sudden it's, man, these guys are they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, and then you go through that, you know, where you pout a little bit, and then all of a sudden you kind of decide I got a man up. That's what he's done. I mean, he's he's been he's been really good in practice. I put him in a game because he was really good in practice. I'd put him in a game whether Dax is there or not because he deserves it. So, do you, in your mind, hunt for those instances where he fits and he he works with what we're trying to do? Sure. Same thing with Lamont. Mm -hmm. But Lamont and in Virginia because they were back line and everything. Getting penetrating penetrate the pitch, but we weren't making we weren't making shots. Uh, I thought, here's a guy who's made shots in practice. With those three, is the next step getting them to do those other things that can get them on the floor longer, and you can? It's a step with everybody, but particularly with them. It's just you, you can't make adjustments. It's, it's 
really too difficult. I, you know, you can't you look and you see, well, I want to do this. What do I do with this guy? How do I get him out of the way? How do I get his man out from the front of the basket? Because I can't throw him the ball. Throw him the ball, he has to come out. So what do you end up doing? You end up on a ball screen. It's the only way you can get that guy out from in front of the basket. But you still have him in the play. You kind of want to get him out of the play. Glad if you get Dax back here tomorrow. I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody today. Talking, some of my boys kind of want to ask. We're just talking about the language barriers and stuff. Are you permitted to hire translators or anything like that? Find one uh, he needs one to talk to the player. Yeah. I, I'd like you talking about for Tavon. <laughs> More for Sags, maybe, uh, maybe for for Mache. Uh, 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 I don't. But Tavon, I can imagine being. Yeah. Tavon has his own language. <laughs> I didn't know if that was like an NCAA thing where you could or you couldn't, or no, you know that. Dale Brown brought in all those guys to work with Shaq, which was, they made, they made it illegal. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if we could, I don't know if we could find one because, you know, you got the same problem academically. They're, you know, so they're constantly working with them, but they haven't found anybody to speak to. And you got all the, you know, the different tribal dialects. The last thing on Sags here, um, the way he protects the rim, is he the closest you've had since you've been here to the guys that you had at Cincinnati on that end of the floor playing defense? Well, Wellington was good. He was 6'9". Well, he wasn't, no, he wasn't in Sags, but Wellington was good. I mean, Wellington is best shot blocker in school history and didn't really play until he really played a year. <laughs> she didn't play, didn't play much for John and then he didn't play much in his first the first part of his junior year for us. Uh, Wells doesn't change shots like Sags does. He doesn't have to block shots to make shots not go in. Sags is, Sags is a heck of a shot blocker. Probably the best I've had since Eric Hicks. And then the next thing is they teach him to go get it once they miss it. Yeah, he doesn't go get it like Eric Hicks did. But, yeah, he's, and you know, he'll get better as his understanding gets better. You know, I mean, he's played two years at a, at a small high school and stood in front of him and blocked everything. So that's an exciting thing to be able to get him up the, He's got a chance, John. He's got a chance to be to be special. He really does. You know, he catches. He's got he's got good hands. He catches. His, his shots improve. It's just it's it's trying to get him to understand the game that we want him to play. Overall, how the freshmen stacked up to your uh, pieces and expectations? I, I really make a conscious effort not to go in with any expectations because I think that, you know, sometimes you, it's, it's better to coach them, I think, when you just go in and, and you just judge what people are doing and what they're not doing rather than what you think they can do. How do they handle praise? Not very well, honestly. Not as well as we handle defeat. Everything was kind of half court, and it was just 
re-familiarizing them with what they do and what they want to get done. So it was, it was more of a more of a scout, more of a walkthrough kind of deal than it was anything. I just they wouldn't have got they wouldn't have got to their apartments until 5:30. Uh, early start. I don't know if that happened. Fly Sunday to what do you do between noon and nine? Well, we're going to have to do something, obviously. We're going to have to, but it'll probably be another one of those, you know, either it's, it's, I'd like to go really short, but go hard, but then you can't cover everything you need to cover. So, you know, so we're, we're going to try to try to get them with, with film stuff yesterday. So today, hopefully we can we can kind of get through what we walked through yesterday, you know. You don't have to keep stopping and tell them, no, you're, you're supposed to go over here. You know, they, they should know, have a good idea what they're doing. This is kind of the beginning of a three weeks stretch of, you know, quick turnarounds of Saturday, Mondays. Advantages, disadvantages? Uh, in that kind of schedule? I mean, if it wasn't, I don't think, I mean, it's both teams. It's right. just, in our case, you know, they're traveling an hour and we're traveling two and a half. Right. That's the, they're, the, the, the biggest thing that nobody ever pays attention to, including our people that are doing the scheduling in the conference office, is we're in another time zone. So, Eight o'clock for them is nine o'clock for us. Right. And when you're 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 consistently or constantly bouncing back and forth between time zones, it affects you. Right. Whether anybody wants to admit it or not, it affects you. I try not to talk about it with them because I don't want I don't want to have an excuse. But I mean, the reality of it is, it's it's a fact. So more 7 p.m. tips Eastern time on a road would be beneficial? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, when we got back at 5.30 in the morning, and, and it, we didn't get there till 2, by the way. You know. So why couldn't we have played the 4 o'clock, or, or I'm sorry, the 6 o'clock game? You know, why, why, and I understand, we were on ESPNU, they were on ESPN2. What difference does it make? We had, if we could have played the four o'clock game, that'd been that'd have been well. We'd have missed the snow, you know. We'd have missed. You know, it'd have been it'd have been a good deal. I just don't. I just don't get playing nine o'clock. I mean, really, Lon's the one that said it to me. Lon said we we're sitting there talking. Lon said, "What? Well, you know, we should have played the six o'clock game, so you guys could have got home." I said, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> Well, I've told them. I've told them, but and and honestly, a year ago they did a pretty good job. It was, it was much much better a year ago. I'm sure ESPN's probably saying, "Hey, you got a team coming off a of Final Four. You got West Virginia at nine o'clock. That's the more appealing game to put on nine o'clock on ESPN too." They don't think that. They don't think that when you lose you lose Cousins and Buddy Hill that are both playing in the NBA, Ryan Spangler who's playing in Japan. They don't think that. They, they they're smarter. Than they know. They study who's got who coming back and who's going to be good. Why couldn't they flip it then? They flip things. They flip games. They flipped your Kansas game earlier this year. I mean, they have flipped games. I mean, we, why could, we got a two o'clock start here against somebody uh, later on that they just changed it to two o'clock. I don't know. It can happen. That'd be that'd be a, a great question for you to ask. Uh, ask somebody in the conference office. Five games. I'll, give, I'll give you Underwood's. Uh, okay. I'll give you Underwood's uh, uh, cell phone number. I've been writing it on every wall of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> These five games, the, the nine, the home game, the nine. I'm sorry. What? These five games, right? The one that starts nine o'clock at Iowa State. It ends Monday at Kansas. Uh, you've had to treat it differently for different reasons. Would you have, anyways, because of the positive? Yeah. We were sure, yeah. It's not too much. It's not ideal, but it's not. It 
was it going to be? The disruption is is getting back at five in the morning. Or getting back. We got back from Iowa State at four fifteen. You know, by the time they go put their stuff in there, uh, like the other day, clean off their car. It's another forty-five minutes. With with all this stuff that you're talking about, and not just the schedule, but you know, players. out there today. 